Good evening. I'm Pastor Kelly Coker Ross, and I welcome you this evening to Trinity United Methodist Church. Will you join me at the cross with several people here at my church tonight as we come together and tell the story, the story through the eyes of the people that were there at the cross. Please join in the call to worship. We gather tonight in the shadow of the cross. Evil bounds. Jesus goes forth to suffer and die. How we tremble with fear. How we weep. Why have we forsaken him? Why have we betrayed and run from his passion? Lord, have mercy on us. My God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? From the words of my groaning, Lord, oh my God, I cry day by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are holy enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted. And you Deliver them. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love? Oh, no. 
I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like potsherd, and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust, for dogs are all around me, a company of evildoer, evildoers encircle me. My hands and feet have shriveled, I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord, do not be far away from me. O oh my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen, you have rescued me. Lord, we come before you in the approaching darkness of our souls. We have traveled this Lenten journey overcoming and conquering barriers that have kept us from serving you. We gathered at the gates of joy on Palm Sunday and feasted at the Lord's table yesterday, but today is a different story. We witnessed the arrest and the trial of the innocent Savior. We watch as he's moved brutally from place to place to be judged by people who have hardened their hearts against you. The sorrow that we feel lies heavy upon us. Lift us, O oh Lord. Comfort us. Help us get through the time of darkness. Amen. This is not a good time. This Jesus came proclaiming a new law. He said he was the king of the Jews. That's dangerous talk. We have a very tentative peace with the Romans. They let us alone to practice our faith, and we obey their laws. It's uncomfortable, and we long for the avenging Messiah. But it isn't this wilderness preacher. He makes me nervous. He is chipping away at what little peace we have. If he destroys this peace, he will destroy God's people. We can't risk it. No matter how the crowds love him, we just can't risk it. I can't believe this. He has done nothing wrong. He healed people. He taught them the lessons of life. He gave new hope. What is wrong with that? How is that a threat to our faith? How is that a threat to the Roman authority? I was at the table bringing the food for the supper last evening. He was so serious, so sad. The disciples didn't know what to make of his actions. He washed their feet and told them that they had to be like servants if they wanted to serve the master. He took the loaf of leftover bread and broke it and gave it to them to eat, telling them it was representing his body, which was broken for them. He didn't know it, but we women in the background also took bread as he was speaking. He passed the cup to them and reminded them of the new covenant, a new relationship between each of them and God and said that it was like his blood, which would be poured out for them. They dipped their bread in the cup and ate it. 
So did we. It was awful. I wanted to run, but I couldn't leave. I followed him to the garden of prayer, but at a respectful distance. Hidden in the dark of the bushes, I witnessed the parade of soldiers, the torches, and his capture. My God, my God, what has happened? How could this be? I am told what to do. They sign us to go and bring back this wilderness rabble rouser, Jesus from Nazareth. So I went. I didn't see any particular threatening about him. His buddy Judas was the one who told the authorities where to go and find him. And he got paid in silver. I don't like that business of paying for life. He didn't seem surprised, but he did seem disappointed when Judas kissed him on the cheek. One of his disciples drew a sword and cut off the ear of one of his servants who accompanied us. I got to tell you, I couldn't hardly believe what I saw. Jesus put his hand on the man's ear and it was healed. Healed! I shook my head. Must be the night air, I thought. It couldn't really that happen. No matter. My job was to bring him in. He didn't struggle. And we shuttled him back and forth between religious authorities. Annas, Caiaphas, and Pilate, the procurator, the Roman law in these parts. After that, we were dismissed for a while.
I knew who that tall, muscular man was all right. I'd seen him with the others who followed this Jesus. I heard the whisperings from the others all around, but I was the only one who was brave enough to speak up. You're one of his disciples, aren't you? I said to him. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know him, he growled at me. I knew that I was right, and I wasn't going to let it be. I challenged him again, and again he told me that he didn't know this Jesus. Hmm. Okay, one more try. Are you not one of this man's disciples? I am not. And then a strange silence fell over the area. You could hear a rooster crowing. The man turned ghastly white and ran away. He was guilty of something, probably more guilty than anything these authorities can drum up against the one they captured tonight.
These people are going to drive me crazy. They are in an uproar because of some wilderness preacher. I examined him, asked him pointed, direct questions. His answers, answers puzzled me, but I really could find no, no reason why he should be brought before me. He did not commit a crime against our Roman government. He was just a thorn in the hide of the Jewish religious authorities. They wanted to have him killed, and by their law, they couldn't do it. They wanted me to take care of the matter for them. Scapegoat, that's what he was. I asked him if he was the king of the Jews, a charge that the authorities placed against him, trying to pin him that, so that we would do something. You know Caesar is our king. Anyway, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Doesn't sound too treasonous to me. I had him flogged, thinking that that would placate the bloodlust. The soldiers played a little game with him. They stripped him, flogged him, put an old purple cloak around him. Someone made a crown out of thorn bushes and jammed it on his head. They shouted, Hail, King of the Jews, and spit at him. Well, they were just having a little jest with him. I finally had to do something. The crowds were getting out of hand, demanding the extreme punishment, crucifixion. I gave them a choice, Barabbas, a murderer I had in custody, or this flogged and bleeding Jesus. To my surprise, they chose Barabbas. I had to wash my hands of this whole deal. They made their choice. It was over. But is it? Is it really over? I think not. The crowds that had cheered at his entrance to Jerusalem now jeered him as he dragged his heavy cross to the place of crucifixion. It was Golgotha, the skull, a place where the vilest criminals were nailed to a cross and died a slow and agonizing death. My God, it was so horrible. How could they do this to him? He had done nothing wrong. How could God let this happen to this kind healer? My heart was breaking. He had healed me of a host of diseases when all others had given up. He looked at me, smiled, and told me of God's love for me, for me. And I could feel that love. God's love pouring over me it was unlike anything I had known before. I left everything and followed Jesus like so many others. The words of compassion, the healing love, the reminders of how God wants us to live, I could listen to Jesus forever. My soul was healed, my spirit was restored, but now, now it was being dragged with him to Golgotha. He stumbled and fell. A strange man was grabbed from the crowd and forced to carry the heavy cross when Jesus could no longer do it. I couldn't break away. I followed. My God, I followed. I stood near his mother and Mary Magdalene and John. And we watched and wept, but no one made us leave. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble. 
Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. Woman, here is your son. Here is your mother. I am thirsty. It is finished. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not, did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and their bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and once blood and water came out, he who saw this had testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when they pierced him in his side? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the authorities, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus, wrapped it with the spices and linen clothes, according to the burial customs of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble. Were you there when the 
sun refused to shine. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him? Tomb. Were you there when they crucified 